All right, guys. Good morning. Coda Boy 32 here. Check it out. We're sitting here in the Freedom Office. I got to think about what I want to do behind me. I've got a bunch of uppers right there that uh, I wanted to hang on the wall. And then uh, we've got some other things that are going on that I'm really excited about. But I want to give a real big shout out to my buddy Ethan Manning, Manning and Sons. He's got a YouTube channel and he's, and he's a really cool dude. But uh, between he and JP Enterprises, check this out. And a beautiful bolt. This was supposed to go into the six millimeter arc. And then uh, things just kind of uh, got awry with the firearm market. And finally, this thing has arrived. So we're going to kick that build series off again. And then also, we're going to be testing out the Apollo Reticle with the new GLX on that 6.5 Creedmoor build that I just finished up. And we'll be going to be raffling that off for Justin's final mission, which I'm really excited about helping those guys raise money. All right, what are we talking about here? Just got an email from my uh, good friend, Chaotic K9, retired Special Forces dude, and uh, he's got some connections, and uh, he confirmed what uh, I've been thinking about for a long time now, and that is the pistol brace deal is not going away, especially after this last jackass out there in Boulder, Colorado, utilized, and this is what they do, if, you, if, if, a, if a firearm is used in the uh, activity of committing a major crime, such as a mass shooting, they're going to try to ban it. And if they can, they will. And this time what they're planning on doing is they're going to use executive orders. And it is my opinion, as well as many others. <laughs> uh, Roy this is an article that uh, was uh, sent out yesterday by Reuters. And I'm going to give this guy credit. This is Trevor Honeycutt. Thanks, Trevor Honeycutt, for putting this out. But uh, anyway, basically this analysis. Biden White House tries to craft gun executive orders that can't be undone. And what do you mean by it can't be undone? Well, they can't sue. You can't do this. You can't do that. And this, this idiot, every time I look at him, he looks like he's about to fall asleep. And it is amazing that Hunter Biden, his son, just gets a pass by the media because, well, you know, now he's a victim. And that's the whole situation. The world plays the victim role, which really irritates and chaps my ass to no end that I'm absolutely sick and tired of it because the pussification of these United States is well underway. And it's going to be up to you and me to save this thing. All right, Trevor Honeycutt, Washington Reuters. The White House is trying to craft a series of executive actions for President Joe Biden to sign to try to limit gun violence. They won't be able to do it. It's, it's, it's an, it, no matter what laws you sign into effect, you can't legislate evil. Hoping they can, cannot be quickly dismantled in court, according to aides and gun safety groups. I would love for the gun safety groups to go ahead and hang out in Chicago or Baltimore or, uh, you know, the evil parts of these United States to where there's huge, huge things going on. But in any case, this guy's among the measures being considered to strongly encouraged by activists is one directed to the Department of Justice to reinterpret existing law on untraceable ghost guns. Ghost guns. So-called ghost gun kits are assembled from parts purchased online or at gun shows and are increasingly associated with crime. Uh, but they are not classified as firearms, so can be legally sold without serial numbers or background checks. Now, that's, some, that's a crock of shit. I don't know where they say that once a gun is assembled, it's not necessarily, you cannot really sell this thing. You become a manufacturer, you're required to have an FFL, so there's laws there for that. What they're talking about are the 80% lowers that you got, like the guys up there in Detroit, went ahead and bought a bunch of them. They created a facility in one of their houses to manufacture these things, and they were selling them to gangbangers. So I totally agree that something needs to be done about that. But Joe Blow, me, you, and everybody else who goes out and, and shit, I do it for the fun of it. I know several people who do it just because they want to make sure that the government doesn't know what they have. Those I totally support. The U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives has said that more than 30% of the illegal weapons it has confiscated in some areas of California are ghost guns. I thought almost every gun in California is illegal anyway. Changing the designation of such weapons would likely set off an instant legal challenge as have other attempts to limit gun ownership in recent years. For instance, former President Donald Trump's ban on the bump stocks. Yeah, the 6th District Court just came in and said they're not considered uh, machine guns which means all the people all of a sudden instantly have them back. <laughs> I think that's funny. Two top White House aides, Cedric Richmond and Susan Rice, held a series of meetings early in the Biden administration to begin soliciting views on gun violence policy 
from safety activists and community leaders like Rob Pincus. He would probably think this is totally, oh, it's just, it's common sense. <laughs> Justice Department officials have met with the gun industry. So it'd be kind of interesting if they get our point of view on where we are, instead of just throwing it in there, moms demand action now and everybody else. Among the topics discussed, according to the attendees, were ghost guns pushing the DOJ. Mass shootings last month in Georgia have put pressure on the White House to act as swift legislation is not likely through Congress. Yeah, well, this jackass doesn't have a problem with going ahead and signing off his deal. Yeah, Press Secretary Jen Psaki reiterated on Thursday that the administration is looking at executive orders. Police say deadly shootings at spas in Atlanta and supermarket in Boulder were carried out by suspects using legally purchased firearms. Again, you cannot legislate evil. But what they can do is they can try to take firearms out of everybody's hands. And until that, only the criminals will have firearms, which leaves us, you, me, defenseless. <laughs> Where do we go on this whole thing? It's absolutely crazy. Uh, Biden has said the administration is exploring whether he has the authority to take action on firearms made using 3D printers as well as on imported guns. Those are probably going to be the two measures that he goes for first. We stand ready on all opinions are on the table. Amy Hunter, a spokesperson for the Pro-Gun National Rifle Association, NRA. I'm glad to see that they're actually uh, active. I didn't even know they still exist. When asked about the possibility of presidential executive orders, White House and Department of Justice lawyers are working to anticipate a raft of legal challenges that aides and allies say. The gun lobby is a litigious group and will potentially take action in court, but their record... Their track record with litigation is remarkably poor. Nick Suplina, Managing Director for Law and Policy at Every Town for Gun Safety Action Fund, Inc., an advocacy group that works with the administration. So they've already got Every Town with Newtown working directly with the administration, but they refuse to work with uh, pro Second Amendment individuals who are uh, looking to provide and conserve <laughs> our Second Amendment rights. We're optimistic that we will see action from the White House in the near future. Yes. Disgusting. Department of Justice needs to create a paper trail to show that any rule change was not abrupt or political. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. It's you've got somebody like Bloomberg who is putting people in office just based on their firearm or anti-gun agenda. Uh, to show that any rule change was not abrupt or political, that it has a strong foundation in law, and that the officials followed a reasoned and orderly process for making a change, lawyers and activists say. If you have to put activists into that sentence, then it's anti-gun. They have an agenda, and not safety. It's taking firearms out of everyone's hand. And like I said it before, any and every person who has a firearm, they look at you as a potential criminal. You have the potential to kill someone, and you are not to be trusted. Uh, they are talking about levers that have to address gun violence, said Christian Hain, vice president of policy of the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence, the group that has met with the White House. I'm sick and tired of uh, uh, This guy is one-sided. He said he was going to try to uh, bring calm and peace to the world and, and bring everybody together. No, no. The administration is also studying previous legal challenges from the gun industry, like the one that followed Trump's bump stocks. The devices which enable semi-automatic weapons to fire in rapid, sustained burst. And they were used, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to go there. The Supreme Court has allowed that ban to go in effect as lawsuits continue in the lower courts to try to overturn it. And it has in the 6th District Court. A group of 18 state attorneys have called on Biden's Justice Department, uh, Chief Merrick Garland, who we all know is not a Second Amendment guy, to close what they consider a legal loophole on Gus Guns themselves. Absent congressional legislation that cements any U.S. president's executive orders or other policies into law, conservative-leaning Supreme Court could have a final say. Yep. And again, a lot of people can't stand Donald Trump because he, uh, okay, he was okay with the bump stock ban. But the best thing he ever did was he placed conservative justices in the Supreme Court. Okay, absent congressional, we already said that. Last June, it sidestepped a major gun ruling, however, by dismissing a challenge to restrictions on handgun owners in New York City and has also turned down a slew of other cases seeking to expand gun rights. Yeah, they're going to have to jump in here pretty soon because what's going to happen is you've got a guy here who is signing executive orders by the handful, by the stack, big books like this, and he doesn't care about your rights 
He's anti-gun. He always has been anti-gun. He's from Delaware, and you see what they're trying to do right now with their mag ban and buyback program. Yeah, if I can have establish a buyback program and illegal and assault weapons ban, this is what's going to happen, guys. And I swear to God, if they are not defeated in Congress, they will instill a uh, what they call a ban on American sporting rifles. They're going to require you to register them, and then after the next big shooting, because it'll come, you know it is. It always does. Uh, they're going to say, "Come on, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do it a." a we're going to pull a Canadian New Zealand thing on you and we're going to we're going to buy those things back with the money that you gave to us or we stole from you and now we're going to pay you for your property that uh so basically you're getting paid you're having to pay twice for your property shall not comply put that hashtag shall not comply if you made it this far into the video I greatly appreciate it I really appreciate all the guys on the Patreon thing uh, I'm actually going on vacation this week. I haven't been on anything and believe it or not, man, what a pain in the ass to go anywhere, uh, over uh, abroad because you have to get uh, COVID testing. You have to fill out insurance, supplemental insurance for that country. And then you've got to take a COVID test to get back. So I've got almost twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 tied up in damn COVID test because we're taking the whole family which means I'm not going to get any vacation time. But I am going to smoke some Cuban cigars. I'm going to drink a lot of whatever they got down there, with little umbrella cups. Anyway, with that being said, thank you very much, everybody. And we always end them like this. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. I'm talking about the men and women in uniform who are there to limit the government based on our Constitution and our Bill of Rights. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. That's it. I'm KB32. Thank you very much for watching, and I am out of here. Y'all be good. Bam. I think I'll have another cup of coffee. <laughs> that's that's if yeah, up from the ground come a bubbling crew.